Read it as we sing Blessed Quietness. Holy quietness. What a shorts. On a stormy sea, he speaks peace. Out of billows. Fifth verse. What a wonderful, wonderful salvation. Where we always see his face. What a perfect habitation. What a quiet resting place. Blessed quietness. Holy quietness. What assurance. On a stormy sea. He speaks peace. Blessed quietness. Blessed. Holy quietness. What assurance. On the stormy sea. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to stand and declare your word. Not my word, but your word. We thank you. We ask, Lord, that you let us down into the deep treasure of the storehouse of your knowledge. And let us bring forth those things that you have shared with us. We thank you for blessing your people here in this location and wherever they're meeting this morning. We thank you, Lord. Hide us behind the cross that men may see Jesus and not us. We thank you. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The scripture that Minister Gill read this morning, we've been around heart all week long, been thinking about that scripture. Bless the Lord, O my soul, yes, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits toward me. The Lord benefit us every day. Amen. We thank God. I'm in agreement with David when David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. God's children is in his place where we come to worship him. Where we come to praise him. Where we come to laud his name. We thank God. Amen. This morning, we want to go back to the book of Ephesians. I think we, I believe we, We've gone through chapter one, and I feel like I haven't scratched the surface. But I believe we've shared the thing that God put on our heart to share. Today we will move into chapter two. Ephesians. Chapter 
two. We've been talking about the great thing God has done. This morning I want to talk about all that plus more. That's, that's not all God has done in chapter one. You got to go on to chapter two and see what else he's done. In chapter number two, we find that we have been made alive with Christ. Mm -hmm. Praise God for that. We have been made alive with him because we are in him. In chapter two, Paul lets us know that God was not ready to give up on man in spite of what he had done or what he would do. God was not willing to give up on him. I've made this statement before and I need to make it again because I believe it makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, It's not what man was doing or what he would do or what he would continue to do that made man, in church they did make man a sinner. We're not sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. Now, I don't know whether that makes sense or not, but it, it, it sounds good to me. You see, we are sinners by nature. We inherited the, the natural inclination to sin from Adam. It was Adam that brought sin into the world. In every man, woman, boy, and girl was affected by what Adam did. Now when you think about it, here is a little tiny, precious soul, little baby. Lying in his mother's arm, or her mother's arm, had not committed one sin, hadn't thought one evil, evil thought. But yet, that baby comes here, or came here, in sin, because of what Adam did. It's the condition that we're in that causes the problem with man. Again, I'm going to make the statement, man is not a sinner because he sins. Man sinned because he is a sinner. We inherited that nature one more time. We inherited that from the first man. Amen? Listen to verse 1 as Paul speaks to us in chapter 2. He said, and you. Talking to the Christians at Ephesus. And he's talking to the Christians at Greater Peace. And you. Have he. Quickened. In other words, made alive. Who were, you see it, don't you? Who were dead in trespasses and sin. Before we committed one sin, listen to this thing. And you already know this. I'm not telling you anything new. Before we committed one sin, we were dead in trespasses and sin. Right. 
Once we walk in disobedience, we walked according to the standard of this world. That fit everybody. I said that fit everybody. I said once we walk in disobedience, we walked according to the standard of this world. Look at verse 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Someone else was our boss. Someone else dictated to us what were we going to think and what were we going to do. And we didn't have much say so over whether we did it or not. Because we were controlled by an enemy. That was once. But thank God, it's not now. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, if you if you never get saved, you will continue to walk and live in sin. I need to say that one more time. If you never get saved, you will continue to walk according to the course of this world. There was a time when we did what we wanted to do. As often as we wanted to do it. We did as much as we could. As if there were no tomorrow. We said I'm going to get it all in today. And get, it, get it out today. But we continue to walk in disobedience. In verse number 3 Paul says make this statement. Among. I mean chapter 2 verse number 3. Which says, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past. Paul included himself in that. In the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature. There it goes. There they were. By nature the children of wrath. Even as others. Now who is Paul talking to? He's talking to Christians. But he's telling us how it once was. Paul goes on to let us know that it shouldn't be that way now. Right. What it once was, it should not be now. Our conversation, our, in other words, our daily walk was contrary to God's will. As a matter of fact. The latter part of verse number 3. Where it says. And were by nature the children of what? Of wrath. Even as others. You see. We were ripe. We were ripe for God's righteous judgment. God could have taken it out on us. But thank God he didn't. I said God could have taken all that righteous, his righteous indignation, his wrath. He could have taken it out on each one of us. But thank God he didn't. Look at verse number four. But God. See, it could be worse. But God. You say you think you're having a hard time now. You could have a harder time. But God. Uh, you think you're in hot water now. You could be in hotter water. But God. I said but God. Who is what? He is rich in mercy. God's mercy never fails. For his great love wherewith he loved us. God's love has no end. I don't know why he loves us. I don't worry about the why. I just thank him that he loves us. He's a merciful God. You know that, don't you? I'm just declaring that he is a merciful God. 
He is a gracious God. He is a compassionate God. He's kind to us when we don't deserve his kindness. He loves us when we really don't deserve his love. But thank God that he doesn't wait till we deserve his love. God loved us before we became children of God. Verse number five said, even when we were dead, when you're dead, you're dead. When you're dead, you're not alive. Even when we were dead in sin. What has he done? The Bible says he has quickened us together with Christ. Uh, to quicken us together with Christ. In other words, he has made us alive. Those of us who were, and that was all of us, who were dead in sin. We are now, that's the way God looks at us, we are now one with Christ. What God has reserved for his son, Christ Jesus, uh, he has it for his children as well. You see, he has raised us up together and made us, listen to a church, and made us do what? Sit together. Where are we positionally right now? We are positionally in Christ Jesus. Now let me ask you another question. Where is Christ Jesus right now? Well the Bible says. Uh, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. So we are in Christ Jesus. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Where is that? The Bible tells me that that is in heaven. I'm glad that positionally we are in Christ Jesus. Positionally we enjoy all of the spiritual blessing that the Lord has bestowed upon his children. Uh, you say, I'm not enjoying his spiritual blessing. Well, you got to believe what he says. You got to trust in what he says. You got to rely upon what he has said. Because when God says something, guess what? God means what he says. God is not man that he should lie. God always speaks the truth. Uh, Paul goes on to say that in the age, ages to come, he might do something. He might show forth, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. In his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. I don't know about you church. But I'm going to admit right now. That I don't understand it all now. But I do know that one day. I said I do know that one day. Oh you said one day. Are you talking about one day if you live long enough. No I'm going beyond living on this earth. One day, we're going to understand it. I said, we're going to understand it better by and by. You know that song, by and by. Lord, have mercy. We're going to understand what God had done for us. We're going to understand it better. We're going to appreciate it more than we do now. You see, we might appreciate how good he is now. We might not appreciate the fact, I said might not, appreciate the fact that he woke us up this morning. Yes. We might not appreciate the fact that he let us come down the road safely this morning. Yes. We might not, I said we might not, we might not appreciate the fact that he let us walk in this place yes. this morning yes. to give glory, honor, and praise to his name. Yes. But one day, I said sooner or later, we're going to understand it, church. We're going to understand it better. Better by and by. For I realize and I thank God for this now. By grace. I said by grace. For by grace. Not merit. By grace. Not being able to buy your way through. But by grace. God's free gift. For by grace, 
Are you saved? Yes. Lord, have mercy. Yes, Look at it now. For by grace are you saved through faith. Yes, and that not of yourself. Look at what he said. Is the gift. Is the gift of God. Yes, God is the one who conferred grace upon me. God is the one who confers grace upon you. And I thank God for his grace. Yes. My God's grace is amazing. My God, grace is all right. right. Thank God that he keep me in his grace. He keep me in his mercy. He keep me because, not because I'm so good. Not because I do everything right. Not because I think all right thoughts all the time. But it's by grace. I say it is by grace, God's grace, I'm going to say it one more time, God's grace is amazing, amazing grace, you know it, how sweet to sound, Uh ah, that saved a wretch like me, Ah, I was was lost, thank God, but now I'm found, thank God. I want, want, I want for blind. Yeah. Thank God, but now I see. Yeah. Thank God, I once was controlled by the natural man, but thank God, I'm controlled now by the spiritual man. Yeah. I, now, y'all, don't get me wrong. I didn't say I always listen to the spiritual, spiritual, spiritual one talking to me, but I said I'm controlled by the spiritual man. Yeah. God's Holy Spirit. I said God's Holy Spirit is who the one who teaches me. He teaches me to walk right. He teaches me to talk right. In other words, He teaches me to live right. He teaches me to love right. He teaches me to do what I ought to do to please Almighty God. If you want to please God today, First, you got to be saved. You cannot please God. I don't care what you do. You cannot please God. I don't care how you think. You cannot please God. I don't care how you talk. Uh, You cannot please God. I don't care how you walk as a natural man. You got to have the Spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit. God gives us, I will tell them, sharing with my brother this morning. God gives us, I believe, the Holy Spirit, the moment that we're saved. He baptizes us. He baptizes us. Lord, have mercy into the body of Christ. I'm in Jesus. I wonder about you this morning. Are you in Jesus? I wonder about you this morning. Have you committed your life to him? I wonder about you this morning. Are you saved? Are you saved and on your way to glory? I'm on my way. Lord, have mercy. I said, I'm on my way to the promised land. Somebody said the promised land is over in Israel. No, no, no. The promised land is up in glory. The promised land is up in heaven. The promised land is where Jesus is. I'm on my way to the promised land. What about you this morning? I'm closing now. But what about you this morning? Can you say you on your way to the promised land? You on your way to where Jesus is? You on your way to be with Jesus? Lord, have mercy, for we are His workmanship. Lord, have mercy, created in Christ Jesus, created unto good works which God had before ordained, and that we should walk in them. If you're walking in good work, you're walking in what God has already created for you to do. If you're walking in good work, that's why God saved you, so that we could walk in good work. Whatever is a good work, Lord, have mercy, is pleasing unto God. Whatever is my work, without the Holy Spirit, is not pleasing unto God. God wants me to be dictated to by the Spirit of God Almighty. 
I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that God thought about me when I was not thinking about my own welfare. God thought about my welfare. God thought about me and said, that boy need to be saved. God thought about me and said, that boy need to learn to listen to me. God thought about me and he reached down and plucked me out of sin. Lord, have mercy. Somebody said, brother, I never was that deep in sin. But if you were born into this world, you came here as a sinner. Lord, have mercy. I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad. How many of you are glad this morning? I said, I'm so, let me hear you say, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that God saved, he saved my soul. That God saved, he saved me whole. That God saved, he makes me bold. I thank you, Lord. God did it. Who did it? God did it. Who's doing it? God is doing it. Who will continue to do it? God will continue to do it. Aren't you glad this morning? Yeah. Jesus purchased the right. Jesus purchased the right to give me eternal life. Yeah. Jesus is the one who purchased this right. Jesus is the one who went to that cross. Yeah. Jesus is the one who gave his life. The righteous for the unrighteous. Yeah. Jesus is the one who gave his life. The sinless for the sinner. Yeah. Jesus is the one who died. He died on the cross. You know the story. He died on the cross. You know the story. He died on the cross. But thank God he did more than die. He not only died, but he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Thank God he did more than allow himself to be buried in a borrowed tomb. Oh, he went down into the heart of paradise. He went down there and had a little talk with those fellows, those sisters, amen, that trusted in the Lord. And he told them, Let's go home. He took them back to glory. They didn't go to heaven when they died. They went down in the paradise. But I'm not going down in the paradise. You're not going down in the paradise. You're going up to glory. Lord, have mercy. You're going up to glory. Somebody said, why am I going up to glory? Because Jesus when he came back out of paradise, he came back to earth. He declared all power. Oh, 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 oh. oh I wish I could hide it right now. Oh, 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 power. Jesus said it. I said, Jesus said it. Oh, power. I said, Jesus said it. Jesus meant it. Jesus said, all oh, power is in my hand. Giving power is in my hand. Living power is in my hand. Holy Ghost power is in my hand. Obeying power is in my hand. Walking right power is in my hand. Loving one another is in my hand. He's all right. Jesus came back. Yes, he went to the cross. Yes, he went in the tomb. But he came back from the dead. The father would not allow his son to remain in that position. The father raised him. The Holy Ghost raised him. Jesus raised himself from the dead. In order, Lord have mercy, in order to allow me to enjoy this life whether it's long or short, to enjoy this life, right. whether it's pain or pain-free, to enjoy this life yeah. down here on earth. I enjoy every day. Right. I said I enjoy every day. Yeah. Oh, right now, of course, this ain't going to last for always. Right now, walking on this cane, I still enjoy every day. Yeah. Right. Because this too shall come to pass. Yeah. I said this too shall come to pass. Yeah. Oh, God is all right, church. He's all right, church. Amen. Praise God. He is all right. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Every child of God knows that he's all right. For those of you who are watching this broadcast, 
you can accept the Lord Jesus Christ right where you are. You don't have to put on any show. You can accept him right where you are. Let him know that you recognize, that you realize that without Jesus, not only are you a sinner, but you're a lost sinner. Those who are sitting in this audience, and you're not a child of God, I would not want to live on this earth. Knowing what I know now, what little bit I know now, I would not want to live on this earth without knowing Jesus as my Savior. How about you? I wouldn't want to live on this earth now without knowing Jesus as my Savior. He knows who you are. He knows where you are. And he knows, Lord knows he knows what you need. You can accept him as your Savior right where you are right now. If you're in this house or in some other house and you've heard the word of the Lord, yes. he's speaking to your heart. You can say, Lord Jesus, yes, I recognize I'm a sinner. And as a sinner, I recognize that I'm lost. I don't want to be a lost sinner. Right. Lord, come into my life and save me. Save me, Lord. Let me experience your salvation. And Lord, Teach me, teach me to follow you where you go. Teach me, Lord, to walk with you in the spirit. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There may be someone in this house right now. I said there may be someone in this house right now who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. In other words, what I'm saying is you've never invited him to come into your life. See, the Lord had to be invited in. He does not knock the door down to come in. You have to invite him in. He said, I stand at the door and I do what? I knock. I knock. If any man, any woman, any boy, any girl hear my voice and do what? And open the door. What did he promise? I will. I will come in. I will sup with that person and they will sup with me. In other words, I will live in that person and they will live in me as we have the invitation song. Three twenty five and the eight, three twenty five and two eighty eight. Three twenty five and two eighty eight. Oh, we'll understand it better by and by. He's worth having in your life. He's worth knowing. Don't go another day. If he's not in your life, don't go another day with we asking, are without asking we him to come into your life. Somber oh, skies. What are these days? Off succeed of bright sunshine. In the land when the mist have rolled away. We will understand it. We'll understand. Yes. By and by. By and by. Verse 3. Bye bye. And we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us. Oh, yes, Lord. But he guides us with his eye and will follow till he die. For we'll understand it. We'll understand it better. By We're going to know more about it. By and by. When we see Jesus. All the same. Oh, we will tell the story how we overcome. One will understand it better. I am right.
please be seated. Verse 4. Temptations hit and snare, often takes us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed, for many a gone is for a deed, and we wonder why we test, when we try to do our best, and we'll understand, we'll understand it, better. it better, by and by, by and by. By and by. We don't understand it all now. We will later on. We will understand 